Good day, folks. Welcome back to another tying video. Um, so we're on to video number two of our bench warmer series. And if you missed the first one, basically what we're tying are uh, a few patterns that you're probably not going to use all that often. But there are days when they're going to be all the fish want to eat. Um, so the second one that we're doing here is a Chaobris pupa pattern. Uh, and it's called the Liquid Lady. Um, a lot of people will just kind of ignore these things when uh, when fish are on them. Uh, different guys have kind of different theories on how to catch fish if they're eating these things, but um, my theory is this pattern. Um, it's a very, very good representative of the natural, and uh, so I'll keep some of these with you, and uh, I'm sure they're going to save a day or two for you. So we'll go ahead and get started here. I've got a size 12 scud hook in the vise, 330 seconds black bead, you can vary your size on this pattern, uh, just like most pupas. And then I've got some light olive UTC 70 thread. And so I'm just going to tie my thread in up front. <clears throat> and if you've seen the picture at the beginning of the video, you'll see kind of those two devil looking horns that these pupa have. And that's basically what I'm trying to represent right here. So I just got a piece of pearl crystal flash and I'm going to tie it in on the near side and then loop it over to the far side, trying to keep my bulk down here. And then I'm just gonna sweep these back and throw two or three wraps in there so I can get them standing up and then come back and if you go back further than your bead is going to sit, uh, you can cover that thread up again and make sure everything's locked in and not going anywhere. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to, I'm not going to trim these exactly the way I want them just yet, but I am going to shorten them up. And then at this point, just so your bead's not in the way, I'm going to come in with a black Sharpie and just try to color those you just basically want to touch the black to them you still want kind of that pearl shine a little bit but if you look at the naturals they're almost a see-through type black color so this works really good to uh, to represent that so that's all you need to do there now you can slide your bead back up and we'll get reattached here <clears throat> And I am going to taper the fly a little bit, just like a regular pupa pattern. <clears throat> so I'll get that started a little bit. Now what I've got is some um, liquid lace. And this is a light olive green. <clears throat> it's almost clear, but you can see there's a hue of, of olive in it. And uh, this is the midge size. So I'm just going to grab this right against the near side, give it a couple tight wraps, and then really start to yank on it so that I can keep this body nice and thin. So I'll come down into the bend a little ways here. And then I try to keep that tension on my thread. Uh, so you'll see I haven't let go of that. Uh, while I tie in this other material. If I let go of that too much, then the uh, liquid lace is going to want to kind of swell up and it'll give us a chunky little butt to the fly. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to do, but just capture that next material. And this is a clear crony skin from Togans. Um, so it's a wicked type material because it gives you that real translucent type look um, and just dulls the color down just enough. So it's pretty, uh, works fairly well for this pattern. So I've got a nice smooth body going there. I've got my uh, taper built in. Now I'm just going to take my crony skin and just do nice side by side wraps up the body. <clears throat> so 
So again, this is giving you that kind of almost gassy, super type cool effect that uh, these goofy little bugs have. <clears throat> if you don't have any of this scrawny skin, you can tie the pattern with just the thread. <clears throat> but if you have some of this stuff or something similar to it, it uh, I definitely recommend it makes a big difference. Uh, I came up with this one. We uh, put the thread body one side by side this one and took a macro photo and the difference was pretty unreal. So, uh, so I've got that covering uh, the whole thread. Now I'm with quite a bit of tension. I'm going to wrap this liquid lace up, kind of ribbing the fly, leaving small gaps in between each wrap. Just slide on me a little bit there. So it's a slippery material on a slippery material, so it can be a bit of a pain at times. It doesn't want to cooperate that one. <clears throat> and then wrap that with a lot of thread tension. Make sure it's really locked in. And I'll go over and behind a couple times. And then if you yank on this while you trim it, the excess will just kind of suck itself up in to your uh, thread wraps. So now I'm just going to clean that up a little bit, like so. Come in with a whip finisher, throw a few wraps in there, snug that up. Trim that out, and then we can prop these guys up just by bending them over the bead. I want to stand up, and then just trim them to your liking. That looks pretty good there. So, there it is. That's all there is to the Liquid Lady. So, like I say, not a super difficult pattern, but about as close a representation as uh, we found to the... Uh, K. Albers pupa. So that's all there is to it. Um, thanks very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. And until the next one, cheers and tight lines.